What's up everyone, it's an I've Saw here and today I'm going to be doing my full review on the Microtech LUDT. And if you guys saw my first impressions video of this knife, that was a while ago. And the reasoning behind that is one, I had to ship this knife out to Microtech for their warranty services, which I'll talk about in a little bit. And two, I think that this knife deserves a lot more time to carry than most other knives. I just think that it's a very good knife and I feel like I wouldn't be doing it justice if I just carried it for a week and then put out my review for it. So uh, this is my full review and I've had a lot of experience with carrying this. Usually this would be about where I put my EDC update video, but I guess my EDC update video in the future will be a couple more months from now. So anyway, let me throw up some size comparisons here and read off the specs that people care about. So this has an overall length of about 8 inches and a blade length of about 3.4 inches and it only weighs about 3.6 ounce, ounces which is a very good weight to blade length ratio. It's not perfect if you really do care about that but overall this is a very good sized EDC knife. That's a large Sabenza 21, not a small. But so let's get into what I one thing that I really like about this knife and that is how it looks. And I usually don't care all that much about how my knives look, but there are so many different color variations and so many different options that you really have a ton to choose from from this LUDT. I don't know how it still is, but I got this off Smoky Mountain Knife Works, and they're a trusted website, and I buy from them a lot. I've actually been to their store, and it's really cool. But anyway, there were a ton of different variants on there, and a lot of other places, everything is sold out. So I'm not sure if it's still like that, but if it is, there will be a link in the description for that. But anyway, um, this has a stonewash handle This is n or stonewash blade. This is not the apocalyptic finish. I didn't have anything against the apocalyptic. I just wanted to go with the normal gray stonewash. The apocalyptic, I believe, has a little bit of a light acid edge to it. I'm not entirely sure on that, though. But this has a very bright red handle. And yeah, I really think it looks good. The hardware is also stonewash which looks good with the blade. The spine is crowned, which makes it also look good and feel good in the hand. And it is also, um, there are these little speed holes, I guess, back there. And a design feature, there is a distal taper down on the handle. Don't really know what that serves ergonomically speaking, but I mean, it looks cool and it feels good in hand, but I'll talk about that a little bit later. And even though I don't like these proprietary screws, I have to admit that they look pretty cool. And yeah, I just, I really like how this knife looks overall. One of my coolest looking knives. Now, I did say there were a lot of variations, but there wasn't every variation. So if you're like, I want purple and I want it in a black blade, plain edge, that might be a little bit harder to find than if you just want, I want a red handle and then I don't care the blade. It's just a little bit harder to find everything that you need for this knife. Sorry, I just spit a little bit there. <laughs> but there are a lot of different variations and Microtech tends to be a little bit slower on restocking their knives, so that's a little bit unfortunate. They're too busy pushing a two inch OTF that is California legal, but I don't really care about that. So let me talk more about this knife. So my warranty experience, like I mentioned before, it was overall pretty good. The customer service was good. I got quick emails back. There wasn't a ton of communication, which I didn't really need it because I didn't ask many questions, but they gave me the R, the RA number, I guess, or RN number. I always forget which way, <laughs> which one it is. I don't know why I should just look that up. But anyway, it was overall a very smooth warranty experience, but it did take about a month. And so, yeah, that is kind of annoying. Just even though a month, I'm not like, come on, a month, that's crazy, because I get it, Microdex is a big company, but I just like this knife so much. To be without it for a month, that was a little bit hard. It was hard when I wanted to carry something, and I'd be like, man, today would be a perfect day to have that LUDT in my pocket, and it just wasn't there for me. So that's a little bit of a weird gripe that I guess I could say, but I wish it could have been shorter, because they're really just replacing a spring on the inside but you know i can't always get what i want i guess and that is a big problem with these microtech ludts is the springs break a lot i've seen a lot of different youtubers just sometimes mid video their ledt springs just snap on them and that's really just a problem with them i wish they used either more reinforced springs or they use actual screws so that they could ship you out a new spring every time you break one and so even though they back up their product with the automatic knife i still wish that they didn't have to back it up that they 
could just offer a knife with a spring that would never break. But what I plan on doing if this breaks again, sorry that I'm rambling about this, I plan on just uh, trying to find some tools for this, either buy them used or maybe I'll have to buy them new, which they're kind of expensive, but I'll probably just buy the tools and then I'll either get an aftermarket spring or I'll get a Protex spring. I believe that fits those two. And so anyway, this was, the warranty experience was overall good. I just don't like that these springs break. So I need to start hurrying this review up along because there's a lot of cool stuff that I got to get to. But anyway, for the fit and finish of this, so this is where I think Microtech differs from Protech a lot. So the fit and finish on Microtechs aren't always that good. There is a little bit of, I don't know what to call it for an automatic button lock, but I guess you could say detent lash, as you guys can see here, that knife moves up and down. And if I put it right up to the microphone, you can hear it right there. I hope if you have an LEDT and you're watching it, uh, I hope I didn't make you just notice it for the first time. But also, we are a little bit off center to the left. Not, oh, I just knocked a knife off my table. Not a big deal to me. And all a lot of these come with a little bit of blade play. And I can't help but thinking, if I got the tool and barely tighten this pivot, I feel like I could correct that centering and get rid of the blade play. But there probably are reasons that Microtech doesn't do that. Maybe the knife doesn't fully deploy 100% of the time if you barely tighten that pivot. I don't know, but I just think that's where Microtech and Protech differ. Microtech is pushing better grinds, but Protech is pushing better fit and finish. That's really just my overall opinion on that. I might do a dedicated video on that later. I don't really know. But for the blade on this knife, this is where it gets really good. So they use a ton of different steels, but mine is in 204P. I've heard that Microtech runs their M390 and I guess 204P soft. I'm not entirely sure. I do not know the specific HRC on this, but I haven't been wowed by its edge retention. I haven't really noticed poor edge stability either. But overall, this steel, it's probably performed to me. I can't really tell, so I'm not going to give an estimate on where it would perform, but it's been overall fine. And what I really like about the blade is that grind and how thin it gets behind the edge. Usually with knives, you can tell if the secondary bevel is super small, if it's thin behind the edge, and that is a very small secondary bevel. So let me get out my calipers. I already know what it is, but I just need to show you guys this really quick. Sorry if it takes me a while, I just really like this. Let me get that to focus. There is that focus. I can't tell from looking through my phone. But yeah, eight thousandths behind the edge right there. Let me measure just one more time at the belly. Nine thousandths right there. And so yeah, eight and nine thousandths behind the edge. That is absolutely insane. This is by far the thinnest knife I have. And you can tell. You can tell when cutting. It just glides through cardboard. I feel like sometimes when I'm cutting cardboard, I can cut it like I'm doing a paper test after I sharpen my knives. Like I feel like I could just hold it here and just go like that. And it just sliced the thing in half. And I sharpened this recently. And I'm trying out a 600 grit, really toothy and bitey edge on this. Now, I don't know if I'm going to keep it like that because I really just use it for mostly EDC stuff and I don't go in harder use tasks where I need a 600 grit edge. But basically, the point I'm trying to get across is this knife is so thin, it doesn't really even matter the grit. I know that this is going to be able to cut the basic things that I would want a higher grit for and the things that I would need a 600 grit or I don't really need... I don't want to get the point across that I need a 600 grit or I need a... 3000 grit or something like that. I just like to be uh, be, pre be prepared for anything that I might run into on a daily basis. So that's why I usually tend uh, to side with more toothy edges because I feel like that gets me more prepared. And I think toothy edges do better at the same or do a little bit worse at the same things that mirrored edges do, but they are still uh, just as good. And as long as you do the task and it's not really slowing you down all that much, I don't really think it matters anyway. But I do also like this blade shape. It does a little bit of a drop there, and so it gives you a good point for a piercing task. You can access that tip fairly easily, and it's got a little bit of belly and a little bit of flat down here. Overall, one of my favorite blade shapes and by far my favorite grind in my collection, and that is what makes this knife. I always talk about edge geometry, and I actually recorded a video of me. Um, I'm not going to post it until a little... Uh, until a little bit later, but I was basically doing an edge geometry testing, and this was the knife that was showcasing for knives that are thin behind the edge, and it just did so good, and it's just such a good performer, and yeah, that's really what makes me love this knife so much. 
So I need to stop talking about the blade and let me get on to the carry of this knife. I'll show you real quick. Oh, I forgot to mention this. If you're wondering why I kept the lanyard on, it's because I feel like there's not much thinking behind it. It's not that I like lanyards or hate them. I always feel like I'm gonna regret cutting it off and so I haven't. One thing that can be good about this lanyard is that if you are in a, an environment where you're like, oh, I hope no one sees that lanyard, you can always tuck it down into your pocket like that and nobody will notice it. So I guess that's a good thing. And, but one negative on the lanyard, it loosens up here and there. So sometimes I just have to pull that string and tighten it. And it's just something that I kind of frequently have to do. <laughs> that's a, a nitpick of all nitpicks. Sorry, sorry about that. But the carry is fine. It slides in and out of the pocket very nicely. This clip has pretty good retention overall. And this carry is very good. When I carry this in just basic gym shorts, it slides out of the pocket a lot better than a lot of my knives, even better than a uh, Spyderco Pair 3 lightweight with a wire clip, even better than a Hogue Deca, all these little small EDC knives. This one slides in and out of the pocket just as good and is very lightweight. So yes, I have carried this knife in gym shorts. Do I suggest it? I think it could be fine. You know, it. I feel like almost all knives, unless it's like a Spyderco Dragonfly or just something tiny like that, they are going to just weigh down the pocket a little bit and it will be noticeable in gym shorts. But this one, I did not notice it. It's very lightweight and I really like this knife as a summer carry and basically an all around all year carry. Just a very good knife like that. So anyway, for the ergonomics of this knife, this is where it also gets really good. So look at these ergonomic lines right here. As you can see, it is flat right here and it is flat back there. And that is what I want. That is my, that is just all I can ask for all these different companies. It's just, there isn't a ton of humps and bumps, like something like a Boker Kalashnikov. That, this is an extreme example, but there aren't tons of humps like this. It is just straight. And so what that lets you do is you can grip this in any really grip that you want it to. And it just works very well. And because a lot of times when I do things just in my normal life, I'm not like, okay, I automatically do a saber grip for whatever I'm going to do. I'm not really thinking about it. So sometimes I'll just grab the knife in some weird way and do the task and it'll work. Now, if the knife has finger grooves all over it, it's going to be uncomfortable. So I'm going to force myself into a grip that I have to think about. That's wasting time. And I know I sound like a high speed, low drag person right now. But I just really like these simple ergonomic lines. And you might think, oh, does that pocket clip just dig in your hand? And I don't know how. Oh, sorry, camera bump. I don't know how, but it absolutely doesn't. It just sits in the meat of my palm and I do not feel it at all. This jimping, the spine of here is actually crowned, which I love. I really do like a crown spine. And so the jimping is really soft. There aren't sharp edges. Usually a lot of times when the jimping is sharp, it's not sharp directly on top. It's sharp on the sides. And since the spine is crowned and has these jimps on it, it feels really good in hand. And this jimping, it actually lands or it actually is set where my thumb lands, which I don't know why I should have to say this, but that is amazing. And I don't know why other companies don't do that. For example, Spyderco Para 3. This is my biggest complaint with the Para 3. Other than that, I really like it. But my thumb wants to land right, or my the jimping's right there for my thumb. My thumb, truthfully, wants to be about right there. And I just feel like companies where they usually put the jimping is like causing you to be locked in in this kind of like stabbing grip right here. And so just this jimping really is just perfect for my hand. I am a little bit far away from the blade, but if I need to do close-up detailed tasks, this is my favorite grip with this knife. If you have an LUDT and you don't hold your knife like this, you have to try it out. It's really just a choked up grip. I just pinch around this pivot area and then I tuck my middle finger all the way up front. And this is one of the best grips I've ever used for a knife. And it's just so comfortable. And the ergonomics on this knife and the edge geometry on this knife are the best, or I don't, I'm not gonna say the ergonomics are the best of any knife I own because they could have been better if they were contoured handles, but they are chamfered and it is just overall super good ergonomics, super good edge geometry. And those are the two things that I look for the most in knives. And I feel like this knife really just describes me. I feel like for, if I could wrap this knife up in one sentence, I feel like this is almost everything that I want out of your average pocket knife all put together into one knife. So I really do like this knife. Anyway, onto the action of this. So this is an auto and it does snap out good. I'll hold it lightly here to get you, let you guys show the recoil. Hopefully this doesn't fall out. 
So it does have some recoil there and it does fly out good. Overall, I've never had any lockup issues. It does hit this stop pin here. Do not know if that's hardened stop pin, but that's good that it's not banging into any aluminum. So yeah, overall good lockup, good action. A lot of people complain that automatics do not have a drop shut action, which, you know, obviously they don't because you, there's obviously tension when you're putting it back in there. And now I truthfully do not care about that. And if you want to know why, I've said it many times, but I'll say it again. Automatic knives are what made me not care about a drop shut action. Once I open it and then do my task, usually my hands are freed up and I can also close this knife with one hand very easily like that. And so, and the reason people probably think when they hear that, they're like, oh yeah, of course you're just some hardcore tactical practical dude. Oh, tactical practical. I like that. But anyway, um, no, I do play with my knives, don't get me wrong. I usually have a ZT0562 tie upstairs with me on the couch and maybe an axis lock like my Benchmade Griptilian. And I play with those a lot. But the thing is, I don't need every single knife I have to be a flipper f a flipper frame lock on bearings. It's just not necessary. And when I'm carrying a knife, I don't. I rarely ever pull this knife out of my pocket and play with it. Maybe if I'm just sitting in my car or something, I will. But I don't really, I'm not just like, oh man, I wish I would have carried a drop shut action knife today. That thought has never gone into my head. So those are the reasons why I don't care about a drop shut action and why I think an automatic is just fine and why I think people should stop complaining about uh, the action and the fidget factor of an automatic. And so sorry for my little rant there. But my uh, two last sections that I'm going to go through is the attention to detail on this knife. And I usually, I should really start writing this stuff down, but the things that really step out to me, or jump out to me, I guess you could say, is this crown spine. You know, they obviously didn't have to do that, and it's just super nicely knocked down. And I actually like this crown spine a little bit more, let me get it out of my pocket right now, than my Sabenza. And I know I usually don't say I like things more than I like my Sabenza, but the thing that I like about the LUDT's crown spine more is that it is, is it is crowned where the jimping is, and that feels a lot better in hand, while the Sabenza is not crowned where the jimping is. Now, the Sabenza is still really amazing in hand, but I do enjoy that crown spine a whole lot. I do like that distal taper with the aluminum coming down. I do not know the function of it, like the functionality actually of that, but it feels great in hand. And that definitely takes some more advanced machining. You know, they didn't just place two aluminum slabs here. Like I feel like they do with the PM2 with G10. But anyway, that takes some attention. These little speed holes here, that probably costs some money, I guess. And this jimping that you see around here, I didn't mention this in ergonomics, but I do not even feel that at all, especially this right here. The only place I sometimes could feel it is maybe on this pinky, but it is not an issue at all. And even though there is jimping, it is not uh, sharp at all. And so that's why that the ergonomics are still very, very good on this knife. So overall, that's going to do it for my review. These knives sit around the 250 mark. Sometimes they're 240, 260. I don't know. Usually you'll see them on the secondary market for under 200, I think. I'm not entirely sure, but used under 200. I, I'll just uh, give myself some leaning room for that, I guess. But anyway, these knives, I think, is an excellent deal. And I think that if you want a knife that is super slicey behind the edge with a really good ergonomics, this is just a really good knife. And also it's made in America. This is my second take of the video and it's taken me till like the 20 minute mark to say that this is made in the USA and it's $250, which I personally think that that is a good deal. Microtech obviously backs their knives with a decent warranty. It's got great ergonomics, great edge geometry. And if you have only used Spider Coats, if like you think your Spider Coat PM2 is your sliciest knife, it is a nice and good knife, fun to cut with but you have not tried this knife that sits at 9,000s beyond the edge. And yeah, it's just really an amazing cutter. And I, it feels weird saying this, but I like this knife because it's comfortable and it cuts good. And I feel like I should say that with every single knife, but that this knife just does both of those two factors and like just very well and just blows it out of the water for both of those two points. And a lot of times a knife, it'll have great ergonomics, but okay edge geometry, and you usually don't run or run by knives like this. So that's gonna do it for the video. If you have stuck with me all this way to the 20 minute mark, 
I personally want to thank you because I need to probably start going through my reviews faster because I feel like a lot of people click off or I can read the analytics and the average watch time is around five to six minutes for my videos and I was probably still talking about the warranty at that time. But anyway, thank you all for watching. Thank you for getting me to 500 subs. Anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you're new and I'll see you guys in the next one.